A cultural icon, she is one of the best-selling dolls of all time. Hi, I'm Rebecca Brayton and welcome to WatchMojo.com and today we'll be going through the history of Barbie. The Mattel Toy Company was founded in 1945 by Ruth and Elliot Handler. Ruth often saw their daughter Barbara playing with paper dolls. I had observed my daughter Barbara playing with her friends on the floor by the hour. They would play with uh, adult paper dolls. Ruth realized there was a hole in the doll market and that she could fill the position with a three-dimensional fashion doll. When we designed the doll, I knew that I had to name the doll after my daughter, who had really inspired the entire project. So we named the doll Barbie. On March 9, 1959, at an American International Toy Fair, Barbie was unveiled to the world wearing her famous black and white striped bathing suit and open-toed heels. Mothers and children bought those dolls and those clothing so fast that uh, they made, the co consumer made the Barbie doll an instant success. Barbie was marketed as a teenage fashion model and at the time fit perfectly with 1950s glamour, featuring pouty red lips, arched eyebrows and her sassy hairstyle. Throughout the years, Barbie's hairstyle mirrored that of the fashionistas of the time. She eventually became characteristically blonde. Towards the end of the 1960s, Barbie's makeup softened and her hairstyle was straight and shiny. Malibu Barbie of the 1970s was tan with long blonde hair. This doll was the first time her eyes were turned from looking shyly sideways to boldly forward. The 1980s brought the birth of MTV and coincidentally Barbie's rock band. African American Barbie and Hispanic Barbie were also both introduced in the 1980s. Totally Hair Barbie of the 1990s is the best-selling Barbie to date, with over 10 million being sold worldwide. The millennium gave Barbie a more athletic physique and her first belly button. In the early 2000s, the doll played up the popular theme of girl power by breaking up with her longtime boyfriend Ken in 2004. Because I will confirm that Ken and Barbie are going to go their separate ways. This is Mattel's family of chatty dolls. Chatty Kathy, chatty baby, tiny chatty baby and tiny chatty brother. And this is Mattel's charming chatty. She's different because she has a different personality for each of the five records you can change. So she can say over a hundred things. The ammo means I love you. Mattel's wonderful chatty dolls. Which one do you want? You can tell them to tell. Mattel Toy Makers present Matty Mattel and Sister Belle. Oh, I'm too pretty. And Casper the Friendly Ghost, your TV favorites. And now they're talking dolls. They really talk when you pull this magic ring. Will you play with me? You hear? Let's draw pictures. Yeah. <laughs> Each one says 11 different things. Can we go out? Let's play cowboy. <laughs> the fun is, you never know what they're going to say next. I'm a friendly ghost. Don't be afraid of me. These dolls are your very own friends to play with and talk to. Each doll is so soft and cuddly you'll want to take them to bed with you. You can get Matty, Sister Belle, and Casper talking dolls wherever toys are sold. You can tell it's Mattel. It's swell. When I grow up, I want to be a mommy. You can play mommy right now with Ideal's Betsy Wetsy. Betsy Wetsy cries real tears. She drinks from her own bottle just like a real baby. And you'll love the soft touch of her baby pink skin. Of course, like all little babies, Betsy Wetsy wets and needs to be changed. And just think of all the fun you'll have giving Betsy Wetsy her bath and shampooing her rooted saran hair. Ask your mommy to get you Betsy Wetsy, and then you can be a mommy too. Betsy Wetsy by Ideal comes complete with layette in four sizes. 
priced from $5.95. You'll find Betsy Wetsy and lots of other wonderful ideal toys at your favorite toy department now. It's a wonderful toy. It's ideal. Listen to Remco's baby laugh a lot. <laughs> You're listening to baby laugh a lot. <laughs> she's the funniest doll you've ever seen. <laughs> Just push the button and she starts to giggle. <laughs> Get baby laugh a lot by Remco. <laughs> Look at that. It's the Duncan Jewel. Watch Gus Samara do the brain twister. And here's Duncan's famous Imperio. Don Townsend makes the man in the flying trapeze look easy. And with the Duncan Butterfly, you can learn to rock the baby like Duncan professional Laura Lynch. The Jewel, the Imperial, the Butterfly. They're all Duncans. And you know Duncan means yo-yo. All right, now. How does a train go? <laughs> now an ocean liner. Now then, how does your tricycle sound? I see. But how would you like your tricycle to sound? Well, you can make it roar with Mattel's terrific new Barum hot water engine. Put it on a trike like this, or like this. You get your own special key. Start it like Dad's key starts his car. The remote control is up here where it belongs. Sounds like a real engine. Put it on a bike or almost anything that moves. Mattel's new Varum hot water engine. You can tell it's Mattel. It's... Broken the sound barrier. It's the Mattel Thunderburp with the real vibrasonic sound chamber that's loaded forever and ever. No batteries, no caps. That Thunderburp looks like real, sounds like real. It even vibrates like real. It's safe to play with. Just flip up the sight, pull back the bolt, and fire. And for outdoor smoking action, add the Mattel Tommy Burp to your gun collection. It fires caps with smoking bursts or single shots. It's rugged, too, with a real wood grain feel. Easy to load and easy to fire. Pull the trigger for single shots or turn the crank for smoking bursts. The Tommy Burp is really for real, right down to the adjustable flip sight. The Tommy Burp is $2.50. The no battery, no cap Thunder Burp is $3. Get both wherever toys are sold. And remember, you can tell it's Mattel. It's swell. Swell. Here's a tricycle landing gear rubber band airplane. <laughs> if you decide to build one, pick a less windy day than I did for its maiden flight. <laughs> So sit back and relax, because we've got it made in America. I know a retired prize fighter who traced his career to the day some neighborhood bully saw him playing marbles and decided to take them all, including a prized peppermint swirl. Well, Jack went home, read a book on boxing, and began practicing and practicing and practicing. And the next time he saw that bully, he got back every marble, including the prized peppermint swirl. Once upon a time, shooting marbles was one of our great American childhood pastimes. It's not so true anymore, now that most kids would rather drift in cyberspace than knuckle down to play keepsies. But thankfully, there's still enough of them going for all the marbles to keep Americans from completely losing hearts. Peyton City, West Virginia, a town of fewer than 3,000 on the Ohio River, 
was named for Obadiah Payton, one of the Ohio Valley's earliest settlers. The area has a rich history of glass making, so it's a fitting place to find a marble factory. Marble King was founded in 1949 by the colorful Barry Pink. At the time, he'd been selling marbles since 1922, long enough and well enough to earn the nickname, the Marble King. What Barry decided was that if he were going to live up to his billing, he'd have to do more than sell marbles. He'd have to make them too. President Barry Fox is the daughter of a man who got in on Marble King's ground floor. His name was Roger Howdy Shell. Is this your dad here? Yes, John, it is. Marble King was his first job right out of college. He was hired by Barry Pink. And we as kids got to see our dad truly live the American dream. He worked his way up through the ranks, mm -hmm. became vice president, president, and it wasn't until 1983 that my dad bought Marble King. You don't have to be an Einstein to figure out the computers and video games. It really hurt the marbles market. Besides Marble King, only one other full-time manufacturer remains in America. By the same token, you don't have to be a Milton Friedman to figure out that fewer marbles produced makes some of the older marbles more valuable. These marbles were actually manufactured by my dad back in the 1940s, 50s, and some of them in the 1960s. Some of these marbles are selling for as much as $1,500 a piece. Well, that could be a $1,500 marble. Sure could be. Marbles aren't always used to play marbles. In fact, that's often the least of what they do. There are actually countless uses, from board games, to wooden shoots, and sound toys, to even decorations. And then there are all the industrial applications. The oil industry, for example, unclogs pipes with marbles, while paint manufacturers use them for, well, as you already know. Oh. Look at that rattle. Yeah. If you would actually look inside there, you'd find one of our Marble King marbles. No, I always thought that was like a ball bearing, a steel ball or something. No, a steel ball bearing would rust or corrode, and our marbles are made out of nice and glass, and Isn't they're not going to rust something. or corrode. No matter where the marble ends up, it always begins its life on a scrap heap. We start with this glass pile, and this is actually recycled glass. We get this from different factories that manufacture glass here in the state of West Virginia and from other places, too. We have some post-consumer glass, old uh, perfume bottles and canning jars. And so all the marbles are made from recycled glass? 90%. 90% of the marbles that we manufacture so are made So the more marbles we buy from you, the more glass gets recycled. That's right. It saves it all from going into a landfill. Coming up on Made in America, at Marble King, it's only glass until it's perfectly round. Then Dairy Queen might not be king were it not for H.C. Duke. Finally, stay tuned to see what lumberjacks have to do with wigwam socks. Welcome back to Marble King, where the glass is never half empty. Four and a half tons of glass are melted every day in 2,300 degree furnaces into which sand, soda ash, and a mineral called feldspar are also poured for hardness and durability. This looks like this machine's been around for a couple of days. It has been. They make marbles today just about like we did 50, 60 years ago. So that's just globs of glass, hot globs. This is the birth of the marble right here. That's the birth of the marble. It would be a flat piece of glass if we just let it fall straight. A marble making machine. I never thought I'd live to see the day. This is thrilling for me. The glass globs are rolled between the grooves of a corkscrew-like contraption that will shape them round as round can be. If these were multicolored marbles like the famous cat's eye, a second type of glass would be added to the glob as it drops into the machine. But, alas, it's a secret process that Marble King insists on keeping secret. This is a sorting machine. It actually sorts the marbles in by size. No kidding. And each one of these separate buckets divides the size of the marble by 15,000 of an inch. That's hot. Yeah, that's hot. Yeah. That's really hot. The marbles cool for 24 hours and are then given a thorough inspection. Depending on where the marbles are headed, they're either boxed up in bulk or individually bagged. Sixty marbles in these bags. Sixty marbles. This is a finished package of what we're doing today. Oh, these are marbles uh, for Chinese checkers. Yes, they are. 
All of these marbles are made by just 38 full-time employees. Including Archie, who may not be the only blind marble packer in the world, but he's certainly the most ingenious. How do you make a bag? Uh, it's uh, made out of nylon mesh. I got like 2,200 feet on this spool. I pull it off, and then I've got a cutting design that I made because I'm blind. And then it cuts it off, and then I tie a knot in the bottom of it. How many bags can you get out a day? I can cut approximately 4,000 now. When I first started here, I could only cut like 400 because I had to use a stick and a pair of scissors because I can't use a tape measure. Yeah, everybody's going to start buying the marbles, so you're going to have to start making 8,000 bags a day. Good. That'll keep me in a job. There are all sorts of ways to play with marbles. But there's only one set of official rules, and the master of those is Keith Moss, a champion of the National Marbles Tournament sponsored by Marble King. Can I ask you a favor? What? It's been a long time since I've played marbles. Can I ask you to show me how to play? Yeah. The rules are simple. Use your shooter to knock seven marbles out of the circle. Of course, that's like saying, just hit Roger Clemens' fastball. So you hold it in here? Yeah, you hold it like that. Yeah. You can aim it like that. Oh, so just, just like it's aiming yeah. anything? Yeah. Oh, like I that, see. Then you aim with it, and then you just flick. Yeah, I think mine must have been a little bit weighted to the left. As with any sport, it's a pleasure to watch the experts play. In this case, all the pomp and ceremony are for Keith and his opponent, Ricky Brode. It's harder and harder. Watching these kids play, it's sure tempting to want to pull the plug on those video games a little more often, isn't it? Hey, it's Hasbro. Hasbro makes toys. What's new, Hasbro? Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head with their own cars and trailers. That's what's new. See, Mr. Potato Head has a car and boat trailer. And there's a car and shopping trailer for his wife, Mrs. Potato Head. It's such fun to do, and so easy. Like this, take any fruit or vegetable, just stick in eyes, then ears, and then the mouth. You can make the funniest looking people in the whole world. Potato Head people look different every time you make them. Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head with cars and trailers come in one and two dollar sizes. Slinky toys are fun toys. What walks downstairs alone or in pairs and makes a slinkity sound. A spring, a spring, a marvelous thing. Everyone knows it's slinky. It gives a big lift when wrapped as a gift. A very likable toy. It's falling in place, brings smiles to your face. Something kids can enjoy. It's slinky, it's slinky. For fun, it's a wonderful toy. It's slinky, it's slinky. It's fun for a girl and a boy. And slinky mobiles with big slinky wheels and pistons that move as you go. It makes a great sound when you pull it around. The driver's an old-timey fellow. A slinky dog, a slinky train, many more wonderful toys. You tug the string, they do their thing. They're great for girls and boys. They're slinkies, they're slinkies, really wonderful toys. They're slinkies, they're slinkies, they're fun for girls and boys. Slinky, slinky dog, slinky mobile, all slinky toys sold separately by James Industries. Song on so many different dials Cause I go both Kiss and a disciplined child hey. So when they see me Everybody barack, barack Man, I'm like a young gun Fully black, barack I cry teardrops Over the massive attack I only make hits Like I work with a racket and back Look at my jacket and hat So down to the So down to earth I'm bringing gravity back Adopted by the major I want my family back People work hard Just to get all their salary tax Look, I'm just a writer From the ghetto Like Mallory Black Man I used to be the kid that no one cared about That's why you have to keep screaming
screaming till they hear you out oh. Pac-Man was released in Japan in May of 1980 by Namco, it became an instant hit and moved on to the US in October of the same year. Pac-Man's developer got the idea for Pac-Man after he took a slice out of a pizza during a brainstorming session. Paku Paku was Pac-Man's original name, which stood for the munching sound he made when he eats power pellets. In Japan, he was called Pakuman, or Puckman, because he looked like a hockey puck. But the American company Midway, who owned Pac-Man's rights in the U.S., changed it to Pac-Man. Hello and welcome to another episode of A Brief History. Today's episode, Super Mario. Mario! Woohoo! Ready, set, let's go! July 9th, 1981, a new arcade machine arrived in game halls everywhere titled Donkey Kong. Developed by Shigeru Miyamoto and published by Nintendo, Donkey Kong was a smash hit game that literally saved the Nintendo company from dying out. In the game, you lead a tiny carpenter named Jumpman through treacherous obstacle courses in order to save your beloved from a giant ape named Donkey Kong. Sorry that I'm talking so fast, but I've got a lot to cover in a very little amount of time. The game Donkey Kong was very successful and it spawned multiple sequels. Some were very good and some were just... Soon, Jumpman was given a human name, Mario, as well as an occupational change, a brother named Luigi, and a new game called Mario Brothers. Mario Brothers hit the arcades in 1983 and was yet another success for Nintendo. A few years later, the video game market had crashed thanks to the huge dive in the quality of home console games. I'm looking at you, E.T. But it was around this time in the mid-1980s that Nintendo released their first home console, the Nintendo Entertainment System, and packaged with that console was a cartridge that contained the games Duck Hunt and Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> This game was revolutionary, and it single-handedly pulled the entire game industry out of the gutter. It was that...